Hey guys, Dr. Childs. Today we're gonna to be talking about the iodine and Hashimoto's controversy. And I'm going to be explaining to you why I still recommend that patients with Hashimoto's use iodine. I see all over the internet people that say other practitioners, other providers, other doctors, etc. They do not recommend the use of iodine in Hashimoto's. I'm going to explain why I believe that is actually incorrect. And I'm going to walk you through my thought process and why I think you should. In fact, why I think all patients, all humans, really all humans, regardless of thyroid status, um, should be taking iodine. So let's talk about that. The first thing you should know is that iodine is required for thyroid function. Okay. Not only is iodine required for thyroid function, there is no way for the human body to produce it on its own. The only way that you can get iodine is through your diet, is through something that you put inside of your mouth. Now in the real world, what that means is you must get iodine through food or you must take it through supplementation, right? There is no getting around this. If you do not have enough iodine and you are a human being, in other words, anyone listening to this, you don't have enough iodine, you don't have enough thyroid hormone, it will eventually cause severe life-threatening issues if you do not rectify that problem. There is no getting around that, no matter what. In addition, what a lot of Hashimoto's patients who believe iodine is dangerous fail to understand is that iodine is found in all sorts of foods, including bananas, strawberries, and so on. So they have this deathly fear of using iodine, and yet they're consuming it all the time in natural foods like strawberries and iodine and eggs and, and milk and so on. They don't realize that iodine is found in these foods, and yet they're trying to completely avoid iodine supplements and things like that, saying that iodine is the problem, when in reality, they're really consuming iodine all the time anyway, just they just have no idea that they're actually consuming it. So because humans can't produce iodine on their own, it means that you must be getting it through your diet. And again, this applies to everyone, regardless of whether or not you have a thyroid gland. And the, the answer is simple. So if you're somebody who is, who is uh, or the reason is simple, by the way, and we'll explain that in just a second. But if you're somebody who has had your thyroid gland removed, you might think, oh, well, I don't need iodine. That's not true either, because more than just, more cells in your body, as opposed to just your thyroid gland, require iodine for proper function as well. Now, it is true, having said all of that, iodine is required, iodine is important, you must be taking iodine regardless of thyroid status, regardless if you have Hashimoto's, you must take a small amount. Um, it is the case that taking iodine can cause problems. Okay, so you have to hold two thoughts simultaneously in your mind. Iodine is required, and yet, in certain scenarios, in certain cases, iodine can cause problems for certain individuals. So the important thing here is to distinguish what causes those problems if you fall into that category, and how can you still take it appropriately such that it does not cause a worsening in your Hashimoto symptoms, or it doesn't trigger Hashimoto's to begin with, because it can do both of those things, okay? So we're gonna talk about that, but really what happens is people blame iodine, and the problem is not necessarily iodine, it's a cascade of events that occur as a result of iodine supplementation in the setting of other factors and other variables which people aren't accounting for or don't take into account, okay? So let's talk about that. So iodine, um, so let's talk about how iodine can make Hashimoto's worse or lead to Hashimoto's in general, right? Because taking Hashimoto's can cause symptoms. Now, or it can cause uh, Hashimoto's by itself. It can trigger that, that event. So what ends up happening is this. When you take iodine, your thyroid gland takes up the iodine and it uses it to produce thyroid hormone. Now, what you may not realize is that pr the production of thyroid hormone is somewhat of a dangerous process for your thyroid gland cells. In fact, when you look at the structure, the physiology and the anatomy of the thyroid gland itself and the cells inside of it, it has a special area outside of the cell that it uses certain enzymes to produce thyroid hormone. And the reason for that is during the production of, of thyroid hormone and the transformation of iodine to a usable form, there is something called hydrogen peroxide which, get, which gets created in this process. Now hydrogen peroxide, let, let me use an example. Have you ever um, had a cut or something like that and you pour hydrogen peroxide on your cut and you see it bubble up? Okay, so that is what is happening inside of your cells if hydrogen peroxide touches them, right? The inside of a cell, it destroys them and bubbles them up like crazy. So your thyroid gland, your body um, is smart. It knows that this is a problem. So it does that outside of the cell. Okay, so here's what happens. When you consume iodine, you are triggering the creation of hydrogen peroxide as, or hydrogen peroxide as your body is creating thyroid hormone. This hydrogen peroxide is necessary for the creation of thyroid hormone, but your body must also take care of it, okay? So it must do that by using antioxidants. If you do not have a sufficient amount of antioxidants, then your body won't be able to take care of the hydrogen peroxide, and it will actually destroy your cells from the inside out. So then guess what happens? Your body um, is destroying itself from the inside out. Pieces of these thyroid globulin or thyroid peroxidase, which are enzymes found inside of the thyroid cell, float around in your body. Your immune system looks at them and goes, hey, that shouldn't be here. This is, this is an enemy. And you create antibodies. So that's the triggering of Hashimoto's that can occur. Now, most people say, well, it's iodine who's doing this. That it's the, the problem is all on iodine's shoulders. Therefore, if you don't take iodine, you don't have that problem. Well, that doesn't actually solve the problem because if you don't take iodine, you don't produce enough thyroid hormone and you end up with low thyroid either way. You either end up with thyroid, low thyroid function because of Hashimoto's or you end up with low thyroid function because you have iodine deficiency, which is a reversible cause of hypothyroidism. 
So this is really what's happening. So let's talk about how we can potentially uh, create that and why these things are still important. So iodine is not necessarily a problem, but taking too much iodine too quickly is a problem. Okay, so what you have happen or what, what occurs, and I've seen this many times, maybe you have fallen into this category, is you'll have people who think, who know that iodine is important and they say, hey, look, you need this iodine. So they'll take massive doses of iodine. They'll take somewhere in the order of higher than, I've seen as high as 50 milligrams of iodine per day, when the average amount of, of iodine that a person needs is somewhere between 150 and 300 micrograms per day. So 1,000 micrograms equals one milligram. So if you are taking 50, uh, if you were taking 50 milligrams, that is a massive 50,000 micrograms, which is a huge multiple of what you actually should be taking every day. Now imagine your thyroid getting flooded with all of this iodine and producing tons of thyroid peroxidase, which it can't control because it doesn't have enough antioxidants. Yeah, you're going to cause problems and you probably will trigger Hashimoto's if you use that kind of dose of iodine. But the key is to not use that type of dose and to make sure that using a low dose, a dose that your thyroid needs to produce thyroid function, while simultaneously paying attention to the antioxidants, including selenium, which take care of the hydrogen peroxide when your body creates thyroid hormone. That is the key here. It's not to avoid iodine completely. It's to make sure that the antioxidants, including selenium, are taken care of so that you can control the damage inside of, well, so you actually, so you can prevent, um, prevent damage from occurring inside of the thyroid gland cell. And one of the key uh, antioxidants that we need to talk about is selenium, okay? So taking iodine with low selenium is, the, is a big problem. There are other antioxidants, by the way, but this is probably the biggest as far as, um, I, as, as, far as I can see and as far as my experience says, or, or as far as I've um, experienced in the real world. So selenium helps do something called produce glutathione. So it's, it's required as a selenoprotein in the production of something called glutathione, which is the master antioxidant. You want a lot of glutathione inside of your thyroid gland to take care of the, the thyroid or the hydrogen peroxide that your thyroid gland produces through hydrogen or through thyroid peroxidase. Okay, so you must have this glutathione to neutralize that damaging um, uh, free radical to prevent the thyroid gland damage. So what you can do is you can ensure that you have enough selenium um, or a simple way to do this is to take both iodine and selenium together or to replete your selenium first and then take an iodine supplement because again, you still need the iodine, but if you replete your selenium first, then you can ensure that when you do use the iodine, you won't be causing excess damage or cellular damage inside the thyroid gland itself. But remember, no selenium, which is a problem, and it is a, a lot of thyroid patients, especially with Hashimoto's, do have a deficiency in selenium. So that is something that occurs um, very frequently. And think about it this way. The higher your dose of iodine, the higher the need for selenium, right? Because if you are, if you are taking more iodine and you're pushing more, um, so if you're taking more iodine by mouth, let's say 25 milligrams in this case, all that iodine is going to get pushed into the thyroid gland, which means that you must have an adequate amount of selenium to produce glutathione to take care of the free radicals that are being produced with the production of thyroid hormone. So what you can do is if you're going to take a higher dose of iodine, you better be taking a higher dose of selenium to compensate for that. So it's really simple. Just think about it in those terms. And another important thing is that you have to understand that both selenium and iodine deficiency lead to really bad hypothyroidism. So if you are somebody who is listening to this, who has been following the conventional advice to avoid iodine because you have Hashimoto's and you're also not thinking about selenium, you're probably in the worst possible position that you can be because each of these are required for thyroid function. So if you have a, a, a setting in which you have low selenium and low, I, low iodine at the same time, you're going to have pretty significant hypothyroidism, which by the way, may be reversible by repleting these levels. But more important than that is, even if you have um, normal iodine but low selenium, you'll still have low thyroid function. And even if you have um, normal I or if you have normal selenium with low iodine, you'll still have low thyroid function as well. So you must get the the ratio between iodine and selenium up to normal levels. You must replete those levels if you want adequate thyroid function. So when you think about whether or not you should use iodine, consider how it's working inside the body, and this will help inform you as to whether or not it is correct. If someone is telling you that is that it is dangerous to use iodine, then ask them why. Ask them what, what, what is the mechanism by which iodine causes damage and ask them about the production, ask them about taking it with selenium, talk about glutathione, which I mentioned before, and preventing the damage that iodine can induce when you take them, when you take one without the other. So that's all I have for you guys today on this particular topic. If you have any questions about iodine or selenium, please leave them in the comments below. And this, again, this is really the logic behind why I recommend that all patients, including those with Hashimoto's, do take iodine but just ensure that you take it simultaneously either with selenium and other antioxidants to prevent this damage from occurring. So that's all I have for you guys. If you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information all designed to help thyroid patients like you. So if you like this information, I think you'll love that information as well. So that's all I have. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.